I like to write because writing in any form tells a story, and whether you're telling your own story or somebody else's, it has the power to impact somebody else's life in a positive way. Hi, I'm Jerry Crawford, and I'd like to share with you a very brief presentation on the wonders of writing. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank former Chancellor Dr. Jean and Mrs. Gretchen Budick for their wonderful philanthropy throughout the entire KU community and for their professorship to honor excellence in teaching writing. I was humbled by the award, and I would like to also thank Dean Ann Brill and Associate Dean Scott Reinardi for their support. Teaching allows us to share with our students knowledge and also for us to learn about their scholarship, skills, career aspirations, and of course their dreams. I enjoyed the total student experience, and out of all the lessons I teach, reading a student's work is one of the most rewarding. Their writing reveals the authentic person they are. So I always look forward to reading their work. I am sorry that we could not all be together to share our thoughts and ideas on writing and techniques. However, please feel free to contact me with your comments and suggestions, and I will be happy to respond and, yeah, learn from you. Now, let us look at writing and specifically our students. The title and focus of this presentation is Students and Writing, Meeting Them Where They Are and Where They Can Go. The title, um, as you may think, is about the students. So many times we get students that arrive to us on campuses and we try to automatically assume that they're at whatever level, whatever course that we're teaching, be it a freshman class or a senior, senior thesis, and we expect them to be at a certain level. But that's not always the case. And so I think it's important when we build our writing assignments to find out where they are and give them chances to go where we want them to go. By the end of that semester, that term, that assignment, what have they learned? We want to be able to start where they are, help them build to it, and be able to access where they go. So the title is Meeting Them Where They Are and Where They Want to Go. So why write? <laughs> the possibilities and awesomeness of wonder. It builds research skills. It builds critical thinking skills and interest. It allows us to go beyond and within. It allows us to express in the question. And of course, what I like, for the fun of it. And we think about the fun of it. Let's go back to our fourth grade selves. And what did we think about writing? And here are some of the things that students said. You know, sometimes it comes easy to them. The words just come out and allows them to express themselves. So let's take a listen to what a couple of fourth graders have to say about writing. I like writing because it just, it just, you can do so many things with writing. You can make pictures, you can write stories, and you can do a lot of stuff with writing. That's what I like about writing. I like writing because you can like write anything, like songs or how, what you like, kind of like diaries. But also you can write more about your school and how your life's going. And it's really fun because you can write songs, be creative, make a story, anything. Well, in college we have students that, as I said before, come to us at different levels. But a lot of them still retain that fourth grader thought of the awe and wonderfulness of writing. You know, many times I had students tell me in my journalism courses, for example, that it's so much easier to write fiction or let them be an opinion writer. And this is where I believe we can really get them interested. And we get them to buy in. We can stress that, yes, you can do those things. But your opinions and things that you write about are only valuable when you do a lot of research on that topic. So if you're writing about entertainment, you need to know specifics. You know, what about the movies? How do they put them together? What allows you to be a good critic? 
What about sports? The same thing. You need to know the, know the rules and the regulations and the whys and why force. In science or travel. So yes, I'll allow them to not always cover a hard news story, but you have to demand the same amount of research, citations, and proper writing with the things that they like to do. However, at other times, it's more difficult for students to write. Let's listen to what one another fourth grader said about writing. I do not like to write because my hand gets tired. So you might hear that. I don't like to write because my hand gets tired. What do you think uh, he is actually telling you, though? Maybe it is that the matter of his writing is mandated by the school and he gets bored. So simply saying makes my hand hurt could mean he's just not excited about writing. This is where we could tell them about the importance of structure, that it's not a punishment. We tell them that it allows you to be able to put your words into a more structured and meaningful manner. Your, your writing matters. So we just don't want you to have an assignment that you give students, be it fourth graders or college students, that just to complete an assignment, to write in a template, to fill in the blank. Let's find what excites them. But, of course, sometime, style does matter. And in journalism, the AP style is definitely the most important. Many teachers live by these rules. It's a good thing, but it's not the only thing. Yes, it can be in a specific class or a specific assignment, but not for the whole entire student. We need to allow for teaching other techniques and strategies. As we're looking at doing term papers and research papers and theses and dissertations, yes, students look at different things as APA, MLA, Chicago. And these templates work and allow them to fit into the family of scholars. Ah, creative writers. They're able to craft new worlds. Produce description of places and people that send readers on trips in their minds. They do this with nothing but their brains and imaginations. <laughs> we need to nurture this. Our profession in the media, we're no longer just teaching newspaper and newscast writers. We must prepare our students to write in a variety and multitude of platforms and purpose. Yes, it could be a newscast, a marketing project, a press release, a government white paper, or a business plan. So we need to embrace the opportunities to allow them to craft the best storytelling and information possible in any of these genres. Again, it does matter. Let's listen to a couple of college students that talk about writing. I find that the hardest thing to do when writing for news is to figure out um, story ideas because not everything that you're passionate about is newsworthy. So it's hard sometimes to figure out what to write about, and that also happens to be the first step in news writing. So um, sometimes it can put you at a standstill at the beginning. Again, when you're talking about the things that you like, the excitement is there. And then when we get to, oh, my hand hurts. Did you not hear that also? Here's another one. What I like about writing is that it's a way to express myself and express like, what's going on and informing people when I find difficulties. Because I'm a double major, I have to write in AP style and EPE style a lot to do being another science major. So that's something I struggle with is just knowing when to like switch back and forth. Switching back and forth again, but she's telling us that she is learning a multitude of different ways to write and that's exciting Let's listen to one more student 
Hi, my name is Marcella Reeder. Um, I think one of the reasons I like writing for journalism or writing in general is because it gives me a way to tell my story to people and a way for them to learn or be informative about things going on around them. Um, I really like listening to the news or just figuring out topics that can really impact the community in a positive way. Um, and so if I can tell my story for them, it gives me a way to educate people. I think one of the issues I have with writing for journalism is I have a tendency to get off topic and confuse myself and the audience because of my organization. I just get on rants. Um, so I think learning about like the inverted, inverted pyramid where you have to get to the point, get to the gist, um, don't have to over explain it. Um, it's something I'm learning. It's difficult, but I can tell it's, it's a very effective way. So, yeah, that's my. So, yeah, so that's you. It's, uh, it's good to hear these students because, as you would hear from the last student, a lot of ideas, and it can get, you heard her say, you know, I can go off on tangents, but again, that style brings her back. That what makes it matter. So we always need to stress that. So let's look at these three. Again, AP style. The primary focus in especially our J school and other journalism schools is allow students to gather facts, write them in proper structure, and it is a career value skill. APA style. One of the several methods of writing for research. And again, allows to gather facts, write in proper structure, and again, career value skill, as we heard one of the students talk about. Creative freestyle. It allows our students to create new worlds and themes, craft authentic self-expression, dream and explore the limitless, and yes, very important, be critical thinkers. So, how do we help all of these students succeed? Well, how do we also keep the structures? The structures are important. We should never minimize the expectations of the structures. We just need to incorporate other ways to learn. Not all students learn in a linear fashion. We don't want students to simply fill in the blanks or just complete an assignment for the sake of completing this assignment. So let's have a goal for them. Each writing assignment should have a goal, not just a deadline. Repetition is cited by a lot of instructors for being able to better have better writing. But mere repetition is not enough. Do the assignments build on each other, or are they succession of different genre that give the student a bit of everything? The long use mile wide and two inches deep approach is not a solid way to teach and definitely not a good way to learn. So let's build in that assessment part. Let's not make it a check mark, pass, fail. Let's build in some critiques, some being able to do some rewrites constructively. So, we need to engage them. Part of the assignment should have built into it, like I said, a critique. Let's not just reject them as fail or even just give them an A. We need to ask them, what did you mean when you wrote this? A successful critique to me is not the student listening to what you tell them. For example, I ask, what challenges did you have when you decided to write this part? What were you trying to say here? And you want to build and allow the student to give you a frame of self-appraisal and thought as part of the critique. Yes, you know, there will be some students that did just fill in the template and won't have answers. So let's see about it on a case by case. Yeah, we want to encourage them. Now that we can tell what they were thinking and what the challenges are and using their own self-assessment, we move into the encouragement portion of the critique assessment. We point to the best part of what they've worked on and what it looked like and tell them, hey, you have some progress. I can tell. 
Here's some of your strengths. However, here's part of the assignment I want you to build on. And you allow them to see where they were good at. Let them tell you where they were having problems. And you allow them to be able to build on that. I'm not talking about just passing them and giving pats on the head and saying, move forward, you're a good student. Because we do need to challenge them. And this is an important step. Remember when you were in elementary and grade school and you turned in an outline? Your teacher graded the outline. And even before you wrote the paper, you were told to improve the sections that needed to be able to be successful. It was during that critique that you were able to build upon your work. So even deadline assignments, either for lab or lecture, if you are scheduling writing assignments, you need to make time. Make the time to be a part of critiques and assessment. So you just don't say next week the paper is due or an assignment is due without building a step in between to give them feedback and an honest critique other than that, you're just checking a box that they did an assignment. Okay. Again, I'm really sorry we're not all here together because I would really like to be in the same room. Because I would like to ask this question to, to everybody here and then take some answers. You know, and don't look ahead here on the next slide. Because, you know, what is the hardest part about writing? And we would talk about this for a while. Well, some would say, you know, it's research, the focus of the topic, finding the time to do it, the deadlines. You know, some of the similar things you heard our students talk about earlier. Well, I say it's rewriting, the self-editing, and then accepting constructive critiques. Frequently in the class, I share that answer to the students. You know, a lot of times in some of our courses, we have editors that will just clean up their work. However, we should also instill in the students the importance of self-assessment. The self-editing portion is important for our news and information and our strategic communication courses. We sometimes allow students to make it through to our junior and senior level course before a student has had a serious critique. You know what? It crushes them. We need to do better. We can do better to make them better. Writing is sometimes too formulaic. Sometimes instructors use the writing to simply have X amount of assignments to justify a syllabus. We should look at our assignments and make sure we allot the time needed to make the writing better. Yes, we are teaching storytelling on a variety of platforms. However, no matter the platform, the writing should be the key. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. Please send me your comments and ideas. I look forward to learning more from you and to incorporate your improvements into my own teaching. Thank you again to Dr. Jean and Mrs. Buick for their award and their commitment to making our students the best writers possible.